Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here on this little board is some information about the worm bin that I've already got out here on the bench. I'll tip the camera down so we can see it when we're um, finished reviewing this really quick, but before we begin, I just wanted to touch on what we're working on here today. It's a 177 day old bin of mixed red worms. So there's a combination of um, a few different types of composting worms living in this tub. And over those 177 days, the system's been fed 14 times now. And feeding number 15 is going to consist of a couple pieces of pretty rotted <laughs> lettuce, a couple pieces of cantaloupe rind. I've also got some coffee and some worm chow over there. So that'll be feeding number 15. I believe they're ready for feeding number 15, even though we gave them a pretty um, substantial amount of apple peels last time. Apple peels I've, in my experience, found to be a very slow composting item. And I was just thinking that, hey, maybe the worms aren't even able to make much use of that yet. At some point they'll be able to eat it all, but in the very beginning apple is such a slow starter. So I figured we'd throw in some faster composting foods and then over time that apple will go too, but it did seem like after 11 days it might be a good idea. Just check and see how things are doing. 177 days ago we started this population in a much smaller system, but it's been 65 days now, over two months since we moved them into this larger tub. So let's, um, let's get the camera pointed down so we could see what's going on here. This is what I actually classify as my medium size container. I've got larger ones which are really just deeper than this. They're the same size but deeper and then a couple smaller size containers. One of which is the um, the green, small green bin that I use sometimes and I mean, if I, I mean once we get started you'll see that we've got a pretty good size population living in here already. Despite the fact that when we started this thing 177 days ago, we had what we estimated to be a pretty puny sized population living in here. And there too, I usually come up with my estimates based on the average value of what people um, say that they think they saw in the comments. So I'll always pull the audience to find out what they thought in terms of how many worms we've got. And when this system started out 177 days ago, the estimate of how many worms were started in here was 36. <laughs> so I mean some people guessed more, some people guessed less. But that was pretty much the average. And you know that was the reason we started them in a small size container. But yeah, two months ago we finally got to the point where we felt like this population had rebounded to the point where we should probably move them into a slightly larger bin. So we sent them from a small size bin to a medium size bin. I'm sure it's only a matter of time before we might want to move them into something larger. That is if we don't decide to just harvest their castings at some point and then haul them out and move them over. So most of the time you'll find that this coffee filter is down the middle where I feed. This is just showing where we feed and for whatever reason I guess you know I guess I had a reason. The reason we um, are feeding on the edge is because the contents of the green tub that they used to live in was placed in here and then nudged aside and then I placed in some fresh bedding thinking that well the worms will eventually graduate up to the nice fresh bedding but we'll let them remain in the the existing stuff for as long as they want and they could just move over at their own pace I didn't want to force anything and then we nudged all that over at a later point in time and we kept adding more and more bedding so we've almost in a way initiated one of these um, kind of like a continuous flow setup. You know, a lot of people think of continuous flow as being a vertical arrangement where the material that's complete is at the bottom and gets harvested by being dropped out the bottom of the container. And other people run a continuous flow system running it across the bin. And I guess I don't really do it that way. I usually don't have like a continuous setup. All my systems generally run with a, a distinct start point and end point. But sometimes I run a continuous flow configuration just so that people can sort of observe how it looks, even though I never really harvest any castings <laughs> out at any intermediate point in time. I just let it all run until the whole system's done and then I harvest the castings, relocate the worms. So I could see um I could see leftovers and what I'm finding are actually just apple peel for the most part. 
and I'm fairly certain that this apple peel had apple on it as well. So I'm not sure if those are just a couple lucky pieces that actually got nibbled away, or are the worms actually working this apple down at a much faster pace than I expected? I'm not sure. I think regardless, even though there's going to be a good bit of leftover material, as we can already see, as we're working our way down into the feeding area, I think I'm going to put in today's stuff anyway, since there's not a whole lot of it. But I don't really like to size up what the leftovers look like. Oh, okay, you know what we're really seeing down here is a bunch of leaves that I have put in here as bedding underneath the feeding. So there's a little bit of an optical illusion. I thought we were actually encountering a whole lot of leftover apple. What we were really seeing is probably mainly bedding. And I guess besides the leaves put in here as bedding, which are actually holding out and remaining quite dry, if you ask me. It also seems like we had a couple older coffee filters placed in here as bedding. Here's some more apple peel, I believe. Perhaps just apple peel stuck to more coffee filter. It does seem like we've got a pretty good amount of bedding in here between the leaves and all these pieces of scrap paper and coffee filters and whatnot. It does seem like we've got ourselves a pretty good amount of leftover bedding in here. Kind of made me wonder if we would want to come in here with some additional supplementary bedding, but all these pieces of paper, I think we're in pretty good shape when it comes to bedding. So perhaps all we'll do is we'll just kind of fluff up the existing leaves that are already in here, which is a perfectly suitable bedding material that we can use. And you know, come to think of it, one thing I did notice was not a lot of worms, if any. So it almost makes me question whether or not the worms even caused, you know, these apple peels to lose their mass or was it maybe all the springtails in here <laughs> i mean all you gotta do is look around you see these little white specks everywhere those are actually springtails type of um a type of insect that sometimes thrives in certain conditions and i believe possibly i don't even know why exactly why it happened here and pretty much only here knock on wood i haven't really seen springtails elsewhere but I'm wondering if it might have been because there might have been a little bit more moisture in here than we needed. I'm not sure. So, I don't know. I've picked out some of this leftover apple peel that we encountered. I know some of it was actually stuck to some of the bedding we saw here and there. And it does kind of have an interesting sort of fermenting apple scent to it. And I thought I saw a worm here or there, but it does seem like this last feeding of apple didn't really do much for the worms in terms of bringing out a crowd. So, I don't know, it kind of makes me wonder what might be happening right here on the perimeter. I would like to start encountering like a nice quantity of worms just so you could see what can happen in 177 days when you start a system out with only a couple dozen worms. Because now we're actually starting to just bump into a few of them here. And I'm sure just within a couple handfuls of material, we've probably already encountered 36 worms here, which is what the population started with all those days ago, weeks and months ago. But worms are kind of cool that way. They sense that they've got room to expand into, so they start mating. And then I think within a month or two, maybe a couple months, their babies are also, their offsprings are also already mature enough to mate on their own as well. So worms are quite capable of expanding their numbers pretty fast. And I guess fast is sort of a relative term. A little subjective, you know, but um, I guess if you're really anxious and you want to see your population boom quickly, then it can never happen quick enough. <laughs> so you might not treat a couple months as being very fast, but um, to me it just does seem remarkable to see how you know, two months ago, we already felt like the worms had actually moved into their living quarters and expanded their numbers sufficiently to the point where we felt it was necessary to move them into a larger system. So, you know, I'm going to start rebuilding the feeding area here. Oh, look at this. Spider. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. He was just like sort of spitting a web and trying to climb up. I'm not sure if he was maybe living under the the handle of the bin or something I'm not sure so you know let's let's start building up their feeding area we're gonna recycle all this 
old bedding that was already in here. I don't think there's real, really a, a real need to supplement what's in here already. But I'm going to position all these um, pieces of paper in such a way that the, the new food items are going to be resting right on top of it. So that when they come out for the, the yummy lettuce and the yummy cantaloupe, they'll be um, pretty much in direct contact with this bedding material, which I'd also like them to start nibbling away as well. And I think maybe the only reason it's sticking around here was because the, the last feeding was sort of something that the worms normally don't really get all that excited about, the apple. And there's nothing wrong with it. The worms can eat it over time, but it does take time. At least that's what I've experienced. This was only apple peel. My, my main experience that tells me that it's a slow composting item is trying to give them entire apples or half apples which definitely do seem to take a while. Perhaps when they're peels, maybe that just enables the bacteria and the microbes to infiltrate all of the material much more quickly and permit it to break down much more quickly. And I think that's just general truth for whatever, for all materials you put into a worm bin. Anything that's smaller, just by its nature, has a, <coughs> excuse me, a greater amount of surface area. All right, so I just took some of this drier stuff that was sort of peeking out around the edges, and dropped it down here too, but I don't want to overload the feeding area because I need to re leave room for the food, right? So let's start in with the cantaloupe bits. Cantaloupes are generally a pretty popular item. And they'll nibble off all the soft melon, the rind, the rind will eventually break down too, but it's a much tougher material which takes a greater amount of time for the worms to consume. So if we come back in here in another, you know, 10, 12 days, whatever the interval ends up being, we'll probably see leftovers. And it might only be rind. It depends, you know. It depends on how the worms turn out for this stuff. And my hope is that this feeding will actually provide, um, provide them with incentive to come on over and start eating this stuff because lettuce is something that they generally eat pretty quickly usually within a couple days some nice leafy greens like this will be gone already yeah this stuff was pretty nasty my mom had a head of lettuce in her refrigerator I went over to her house a few days ago the idea was to eat some Mexican but when she pulled the lettuce out the entire head was so bad that there was nothing salvageable on it so it became a worm food contribution <laughs> and you know I'm tempted I, I had intended to come in here with a couple more pieces of supplementary bedding to include with this feeding and I figured let's try to incorporate it it does already seem to me like there is a lot of bedding in here we picked it all out as we were examining the progress of the previous feeding but I'm hoping that the lettuce and the melon have a somewhat better response and that the worms actually come out and start mobbing this stuff a little bit more to eat it. And you know what? I also had some coffee that I was looking to get rid of. I'm, one, I'm wondering if I'm going overboard here. I think we're going to explore the rest of the material in the system just so we can get a better view of the worms. Because even though they're not in the feeding area, they must be hanging out in the rest of the material. So. I just wanted to demonstrate for you that this system does in fact have a sufficient population size to warrant a space this size to live in. And you know what? Let's um let's give them a little bit of pulverized eggshell, which is the grit that I use, and let's also kind of dress up this coffee with a little bit of my worm chow too. So now between the um the yummy produce down low. There's also some coffee and worm chow up high. Hopefully we've um, rang the dinner bell in such a way that's going to produce a good turnout over here. Here and there I feel like I'm still bumping into little pieces of apple. But luckily the plastic covering that we're using now is pretty thorough. Up until about a week or two ago I'm not sure if it was the last feeding or the feeding prior we 
had upgraded them from using kind of a patchwork covering where there was like a couple small pieces of bubble wrap and another piece of plastic and it was um, just an assortment of different bits of plastic that all allowed for a little bit of airflow in between them. But we decided it was time to swap that out for just one continuous piece of plastic, a, a somewhat larger plastic bag that does actually go edge to edge all the way around. So I think right away you're already starting to see how there's a good number of worms hanging out in this material here, which is immediately adjacent to the feeding zone. And for whatever reason, the feeding zone just didn't seem to, I don't know, interest them all that much. It did seem like there was still some springtail activity going on here, perhaps a little less than we've seen in the past check-ins. It was really starting to seem like the springtail population in here was starting to get almost a little bit out of control. And I was really hoping to possibly um, reduce their numbers a little bit. I thought one possible way to achieve that would be to help the system dry a little bit, possibly leaving it uncovered. So I think we even might have gone one feeding interval where the time in between the two feedings was spent with no coverings. It might have only been the last time that we went back to plastic coverings. And it might have been at that time that we actually upgraded to the somewhat larger material. So yeah, I mean, you could tell already, once we get out of the feeding area, for whatever reason, and the material right alongside of it, there was a good number of worms. And then, as you continue working your way over, we gradually get into older and older stuff. Sometimes making me wonder if that's really where the worms are hanging out. It does seem to be the case, no? Interesting. And it's, you know, not always the brand new, freshest food that they're very interested in. A lot of times... They're hanging out in this older material because there's still leftovers of whatever older feedings might have been applied to this stuff for them back then. And that that stuff is finally maturing to the point where they're finally able to rip into it. So I think we've bumped into a good number of worms in almost every handful ever since we left the feeding area. <laughs> for whatever reason, the feeding area just seems to be the unpopular spot in this system. But you can see it's almost like a little conveyor belt, you know. As we start working our way from the fresh bedding, fresh food supply over to this side, we start encountering, you know, material that's even more and more heavily broken down. And over here, this is already the stuff that came over from their previous home, the um, small green container that they lived in. And worms are still even occupying this stuff quite happily and contently, right? Because, um... Because, you know, there's a good moisture content, there's usually still leftover bits of stuff in it that they continue to work on. So even though the stuff looks like completely converted um, material, completely broken down castings, the worms still see it as um, material that they can hang out in and still utilize as a food source. I guess that's one of the interesting things about worm castings is that it... Um, the first round of worm castings being created is still so full of nutrients because the, the stuff just goes through the worm's body so rapidly that it can continuously be, not continuously, but repeatedly for a few times at least, get re-eaten by the worms. I think it's like maybe six or seven times that the worms can continue to eat their own castings and continue to extract nourishment from it until such a time that it can no longer provide them with um, a realistic food source. But that is kind of interesting that the, uh, the stuff that they eat goes through their bodies so rapidly that they, um, they can always turn to their old castings as a food source if nothing else is available. So you got to agree with me if, um, if you look through what's going on in this bin that there's definitely more worms living in here than just 36. I would have to say many, many more than just 36. <laughs> so I had held on to this this last coffee filter over here thinking that we might upgrade them from their old coffee filter, but the old coffee filter is still holding up quite nicely as a feeding zone indicator, so I figured we'd just keep it in service for perhaps another round. And then like I've, as we've done in the past, we'll just recycle it as supplementary bedding at some point in the future when it starts to show signs of wear. but. At the moment, it still looks like it's in pretty good shape. 
So we're pretty much done here. Not much left to do other than get things covered up here. I mean, each of these layers in my mind has a function, you know, so the plastic is quite clear, which is really meant to be a vapor barrier and inhibit drying due to evaporation. But the, the paper that's right beneath it, I treat as sort of a landing pad for the condensing moisture that would otherwise pass through the plastic. Sort of a landing pad where the moisture collects into little puddles even sometimes. The worms really seem to like that, so they come up for that. And then since the plastic is sort of translucent, and at certain times of the day it might be just too bright and um, inhospitable for the worms, because worms just generally don't like brightness, you know, they like darkness. That's what this piece of bag on top provides them, is a little bit of darkness. So that's it for our check-in with our now 177-day mixed worm population. Pretty nice uh, progress going on here, I must say. I'm very pleased to see how these little guys are doing. And hopefully what we did over in the feeding area is going to provide a little bit of um, incentive for them to start making use of that space as well, rather than just leaving it out there for the springtails and microbes to eat all that apple. Hopefully that cantaloupe and lettuce and coffee and worm chow will bring them over and make them feel like they can make use of the whole space in here. All right, everyone, that's it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.